There we go. Okay, sorry for the delay. I'm not used to this in 1080p, it's a little small. All right, welcome everybody. Um, I'm, I came up with a technique for lighting tunes. And uh, first, of, first uh, the tune shader only does two things, basically. It creates a, a bright area and a dark area. And that's about it. So it doesn't seem to be too hard to light it. But actually, I uh, came across quite a few problems. But uh, they only kind of un unravel themselves if you try to do a little more complex stuff. So let's have a look at we'll, what we'll be talking about. The scene setup, which is, um, well, KISS, keep it simple, and you'll be fine. The tune shader settings, they are very, just very briefly. I mean, it only has two sliders, so not many settings. Tune lighting, that's the hard part. So um, I'll just mention the freestyle and then the, let's call it the trick I uh, came up with to solve the lighting issue. So this is Vincent. You can download it in the Blender Cloud if you're a subscriber. It was designed by Andy Gorelczyk. And um, this is, uh, the, the shading that it has right now is basically the, the um, Despicable Me. It's very similar to that. So ever since 3D came out, a lot more different shading models for cartoons actually developed. And if you remember back in the days, the Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck, and I didn't want to show any of those pictures because I don't have any copyrighted images of, let's say, The Simpsons. But I guess you can imagine, it's just outlines like freestyle and then shadeless areas. So this is where we are at today with Pixar, Disney, and so on. And let's compare that to the Glass Half movie. In the Glass Half movie, we have basically a very similar thing to this style. This was what I want to be presenting. We don't have the um, flat surfaces like we have in The Simpsons. We have subtle gradients here. But I want to focus on these areas. You can see this is darker than the top part of the arm because it's at the downside. And at the downside, we usually assume shadow because light is usually coming from above, unless you're the devil. So this would be the start. I'm not going to show how to do that, because this is just emission shaders, nothing else. And then I put some freestyle over it, which makes it pretty decent already. This would be the Simpsons style. Only, only use um, flat shaded, no, not flat shaded, but single colored surfaces, no gradients. And then this would be the final result after the compositing. So, the initial sh problems. The tune shader does not look cartoony and the even lighting. For that, I'm going to jump over to Blender. And let's have a look at this. This is a sphere with a tune shader. It kind of looks OK, but um, not really tunish. It's I, I don't know if there's a word for that. But the problem f with this is, um, it's interacting with its environment, and usually tunes do not. You don't have bounce light in The Simpsons. You don't have um, reflections in reflections in The Simpsons. What we need is only one light source, and then um, that's it for the lighting of the objects. Right now you can see there's bounce light coming from the floor and illuminating this area, creating a very subtle um, effect that I don't want. Actually, I don't have the script in here. It doesn't matter. The solution to that is to turn off bounce lighting, but sometimes we do actually want it. So I usually, what I usually do is go to the cycles. Sorry, this is very, very um, big because I needed to change the resolution. All we need to do is turn off the diffuse and the glossy, and you can also turn those off, for these elements. You can probably also set the bounce to zero, but then we, um, sometimes you do want the shadows or something like that. Okay, this looks a lot more cartoony. That would be a sphere in a, let's call it semi-lit cartoon. By semi-lit I mean uh, sometimes in The Simpsons if they want to express something with lighting, like a dark environment or like a threat or something, they will use this type of shading. One bright and one on one sur and one um, dark area of the model, and that would be the uh, very simple lighting, which is the effect that I want to go for. Okay, we can ignore that for now. 
Let's have a look at what the shader does by itself. It's, um, it has two colors. One is the color that you see in the dark area and one is the one in the bright area and the one in the dark area is um, affected only by the background. The brighter the background, the brighter this color gets. So if I, let's open this up, if I have a look at the lamp, I can increase the lamp strength and you can see this area gets brighter but this one is not affected at all so this is these are the two components basically that outside of the shader that influence the tune objects the lamp which has a size to make it softer i usually use the size because uh, because the smoothness of the tune shader bears some pitfalls and the brightness of the light as i said it only controls this area and this area is controlled by the background. We can influence the size of this. This is a very important slider. But the smoothness, as I said, I like this to be controlled by the lamps and uh, there's the reason. If these two values added are more than one, are greater than one, then this happens. So I usually use, leave the smoothness alone and use the lamps to control the smoothness. Okay, let's just do exactly that. So, uh, lighting a sphere is surprisingly easy. But let's have a look at a monkey. So actually, same thing. Well, this should still be turned off, but this isn't, okay. So let's start like that. Now we only have the two areas that I was talking about. There is... I'm going to lower the size. Let's keep it like this. This should be good for demonstration. Okay, so now I have the tune where uh, there is a dark area over here, which I don't really want. This would be, for a tune situation, that would be pretty extreme lighting. This part I can live with or I even want, but this part I don't want illuminate. Uh, I don't want to be in the shadows. So I'm going to duplicate the light and move it over here. So now this is lit, but now it's not lit evenly anymore, which is basically my main point. I want this to be evenly lit. I only want two colors, the darker one, the brighter one. What we have here now is we have very bright spots here. We have the same dark spots here and we have uh, something in between. I'm going to move this further away to enhance, to increase the effect, just so we can see it better. All right, so now we have all sorts of gradients. If I put this, uh, if I took down the lamp size, it would be even worse, so I'm not going to do that. If I, if I made hard gradients here, you can imagine that would not be good. So, so that's one of those initial problems I was talking about. It, um, the tune shader does not look cartoony. That's, uh, you can just turn off the uh, ray visibility or turn on the bounces and the even lighting. The even lighting problem still remains. Now we have this weird um, line over there so I could duplicate this light and try to move it over in order to get rid of that. doesn't seem to be that easy. So let's have a look at what we can do. We can use the tune rendering as a mask. And by that I mean I want two colors only. And right now I get the problem with all the gradients. If I render this out, um, let's, let's delete this and start over input render layers that's all we need at the moment so no camera I guess okay that was weird oh it doesn't oops 
leave. It doesn't render if I don't have the output. I did not know that. Okay. I thought I could just use a viewer. Okay, never mind then. We're just going to very sensitive. Let's just leave it at that. And actually, I don't want a gradient on this thing, the mission, but I'll just hide it. Or, um, well, yeah, that wouldn't hide it for render. Let's move it to another layer of 12. Okay. Composition output is not connected. It doesn't matter. The My mouse, unfortunately, is moving if I let it go for the shortcuts it moves away and the backdrop okay this is a bit noisy sorry let me change that The switching to the HD resolution really makes it hard to handle this. So let's switch this to 100 samples. That should be enough. There we go. That should look good enough. All right. The idea behind this is if I add up lights, at some point it will get white. So if I add up enough lights, we'll only have white and the darker color. It doesn't matter what the darker color is at all. But if I, um, if I try to use the lights without the compositor, if I try to use the colors of the tune shader, we will get these weird gradients. But we can cut off the gradients by using constant. If there was less noise, this would be, um, let's just not use constant, use ease uh, linear instead and move these closer together. Okay, so what we have now is a mask. We should probably make the background we, uh, transparent so we can add it later. We can composite it over anything. Okay, so what we can do now is use this shader, uh, use this um, value as a mask. So I'm going to combine it with a factor and then I'm going to choose my background color here and my foreground color here. Let's just make this darker and let's actually do render this on so many cables. Let's do render this on transparent. And uh, let's just use another mix node with a totally different color. Okay. So that would be my tune object. And actually, this was good thing is you can you can of course refine the the mask however you want. So. That would be roughly my technique. I will, I will um, show this in a more um, less noisy le and better prepared fashion. But you can see, if I were to add more lamps, I would not get more gradients. I can cut off the gradients wherever I want them. So if I move this over, my dark area shrinks. So if we use um, a big enough softness or a big enough size for the lights, we can actually make the gradient very smooth. And this way we can tweak it in, in, uh, in the compositor in a way that we can set how large the dark areas are going to be. Here the gradient is not very um, wide, so I can, I can uh, not control that much. But um, 
yeah, let's let's head over to Vincent because there is uh, there's more um, more uh, prepared. Vince. Oh, Vincent Toon would be even better. That would be... That was Vincent Toon, exactly. Okay. So many windows. Here you see the mask. I actually distributed a lot of lights. Sunlights are my favorite in this part because they allow very even lighting, but they would cast a shadow on the arm part. And so I just added lamps wherever I needed them. And since you since we're overexposing the white part, it doesn't matter how many lamps you add as soon as long as the it's still rendering? No, it's pro post pro post-processing I guess. As long as we manage to um, overexpose the, pl the parts that, we, uh, that are white and not light the parts that are supposed to be black at all, we can do whatever we want. If I move this lamp away you can see that there's a... Oh, it's not even, it's not even uh, strong enough. I could probably leave this lamp out. It's probably there for a different pose. You can see there's a, it's developing there, but then it gets cancelled out by the very, very bright sun. Which is great for me because I'm not that great with lighting. But overexposing, I can do. That's fine. <laughs> so actually, I think the lamp was for the face. I don't know. Anyways, this is what my Vincent looks like in the end. It's just white and dark. And if I render this, I already did, then I get the composition that looks like that. In case you're wondering how I did the lines, that's called freestyle. Um, all you need to do is go to the render settings, find the option that's called freestyle. Um, Oh, it's, it's post-processing? No. <laughs> there it is, yeah. Huge menu. Okay, actually, isn't there, isn't there an, a DPI settings here somewhere? Yeah, exactly. So native, and let's get the spec to 72. Okay, that looks better. Okay, so <laughs> so sh I should go higher, right? Let's do this as a compromise. Okay, so all you need to do is tick that, tick that, and then um, you can see more here. But those are just experiments. Just tick it, and it will almost look like that. So um, that's fairly simple. What I do for uh, the freestyle is I actually composite it over at the end. I'm going kind of going backwards here, but um, yeah, I just render it as a white material, and then I do the freestyle on it, and then I multiply it over my original image because this way I have full control over how um, what color it's supposed to be and how thick it's going to be and how prominent and so on. So I I usually do the freestyle on a separate layer with a shadeless white material because that renders very fast and then I can use the multiply node to to um, uh, determine the strength or just to, to overlay it. Okay, so that would be the result before that. That would be the colored layer. This is from a different scene. I just have, a, I just have another scene where there's a copy of Vincent with just the shadeless material. And here is an override material, which is the tune shader. Plug this into a color ramp and use the mix node here in order to, I can see those are actually not important. So I use the color correction 
to make the um, to make the lower socket brighter, and by doing so, I'm feeding the lower socket is the bright part here because wherever this is white, the lower socket gets used. Wherever this is black, the upper socket gets used. So I can also make the this uh, harder the the edge. And as you can see, here are some, let's call them mistakes. This shouldn't be, this should not be in the shadow. This should be a lid. So I can just uh, crush the whites and that will fix that. So you have, actually you have a lot of control over this in post even. And it also renders fairly fast. Um, that it might actually render faster in Blender internal. I haven't checked that because I'm um, cycles hooked on cycles now, so I, I didn't even give that a go. So uh, let's have a look at the final again. So um, tune compositing, as I'd call it now, using the tune shader only as a mask and add the colors later, and then composite the, and the freestyle on top of it. You can go nuts with the freestyle, by the way. I found so many options testing this. Wow. Okay, so that would be, that would be uh, the basics of how I would approach tune lighting. Because, as I said, overexposuring this thing stuff is really easy. Lighting it correctly is hard enough, but lighting a tune shader that is, that is so sensitive that it only has basically two options. To me, that was next to impossible. Maybe there's a different method, but I'm actually quite happy with this one because the render times are quite fine, the results are very tweakable in post, and I, I like the style. I think that that worked out. Imagine, um, that's, so there are some remaining problems. Lighting during an animation, if your character walks through those lights, uh, there can be a ton actually in the end, that might cause a problem, but I guess you can cheat with parenting the lights to the armature or parenting them to anything or maybe even hand tweaking them. If you see there's a very problematic place, you might just animate the lamp by hand as well or try to make your cartoon character only jump very fast so nobody notices the little mistakes during the animation. You do might run into problems if you have a highly detailed topology. That is because um, those little errors that we saw, like uh, the side of the face, appearing here. The more detailed your topology is, the more the harder it is to control those areas and get rid of them. You might need more lamps or you might find another way around it, but the good thing is usually cartoons, they are not highly detailed, so we'll just skip that. The fine structures and hatching, we'll have a look at that right now, because I originally thought that this presentation would be 20 minutes long, but then I saw they booked me for the entire hour. So the question if we handle the cross hatching kind of answered itself. And let me show you what I mean by that. There it is. So that would be a couple of freestyle layers on top of each other and some scribble stuff. So it is the very same technique. I use the tune, the tune shader as a mask to add the cross hatching here. I think I used like 10 freestyle layers on top. And I did some additional thing. I used the ambient occlusion and added it to the mask. You can see there's a cross hatching here, which is fairly coarse. This is supposed to be the very dark shaded areas of the tune character. And here we have a much more I don't like this viewer. Ah, oh, there we go. This is a much more finer structure. And this is, um, I just additionally use the ambient occlusion as a mask. You can, of course, use hard shadows as a, as a mask and get them uh, like a single hatching or something. Or um, this one time I did a, a visualization for a presentation where we had a building and I just used uh, this direction of cross-hatching for the shadows and the other one for 
um, the this highlight. So just two different directions. In this, I use two different um, hatching methods. Um, it it all works out, I guess. Let's see. The cross hatching should be this. Let's see if the node tree is presentable. Nope. We need to use this a more uh, a more simple tree, but I'm I'm afraid this is even worse. Mm, let's just render this. So since it's getting late and we all want to go home, I'm I'm just gonna rush through that basically. All right, let's have a look. This is the all right. This now got very. This is the shaded area of the cartoon, the tune shader. It's actually very shaded. There we go, getting back some detail. So this is how I, I separate the non-hatched from the hatched. Then we have the ambient occlusion mask, which I'm using right here. So everything that is bright over here gets the smaller hatching. Then I'm using, which one is that? That's the freestyle layer, or at least one of them. And actually with this, I ran into some troubles with the teeth, because they shouldn't be affected by the mask. Because I, don't, I didn't want them to get affected by the ambient occlusion, and I don't, didn't want shaded areas in the teeth. So I actually took them out and handled them separately. So in the end, this, the setup for this was actually more extensive than I thought. But I think um, the result looks fine. And it's, I w did not go overboard. It didn't take me weeks to come up with this or something. And it wasn't uh, like some of, um, some of the notaries I've seen in this uh, convention. It was still manageable. And so I thought, OK, I'm going to say, I'm done with the technique. I like it. This is the way I'm going to use the tune shader from now on. And that's it. <laughs> Questions? Yes. How did you do the cross hatch tune shader? That's not a shader. I tried the procedural, but it's um that's not a shader. That's a very simple texture that I overlaid in. Some of these I did in Krita, some I downloaded from the Blender Cloud, and this is After Effects Scribble input. And you can animate that, so you can even make it uh, nice and twitchy and jumpy. So I just I experimented. I did this with Krita with a fill brush, and I think this one and these are from the Blender Cloud. I experimented with a lot of them, and actually, if you recall, I said it's hard to handling the fine structure in hatching. Actually, with the, if you use the hatching, those mi there might be lines that are just one pixel thick. So if you render this a lot bigger than you're actually going to use it, or a lot smaller, the hatching will break. So keep that in mind. You have to do your test render in the original size, not smaller, not larger because the fine structure of the hatching will easily break. That's, that's a very serious issue. And here you can see actually the, just the ambient occlusion mask. And I really like this effect that um, you can make it more subtle. But I really like the effect that you can use shadows, use shaded areas, and use the ambient occlusion. Either combine them with multiply or use them however you want with uh, different hatching textures. So as I said, the hatching was just a single image texture over here. Very simple. For me? The hatching? It's fairly hard because freestyle marks edges. So what you need to do is create all the edges. So you have to subdivide it a lot. And then only the next problem would be if you'd, you'd have to use loop cuts in order to, um, because otherwise you'll have the, um, the um, squares. And I tried that, too. And I tried to use the um, displace modifier in order to get them a little more um, not so evenly spaced. And I tried some modifiers on the, on the um, freestyle. But it did not look that great. 
it was hard to control and in the end I thought hey I do have After Effects let's just click Scribble so that worked yes mm -hmm. Pietro Yeah. Um, yeah, that's. I'm sorry. Say, say the last one part again, please. Yes. Uh, first, you mean you mean uh, with it? It happens with the diffuse shader too. I forgot how the phenomenon is called, but it's a problem in all ray and path tracers. So I don't have a workaround with that. What? Yeah. What you need to do is change the lighting. There's no way around that. Uh, well, uh, to my knowledge. Yes, please. It might work, but I think uh, it's easier with a tune shader because if it will react differently to uh, multiple light sources. I think if you use multiple light sources on the diffuse shader, you get a very subtle gradient, and you'll have a hard time controlling that with the with the color ramp. You may as well, you may of course use it. And there's another downside to the diffuse shader: it clears up much slower than a tune shader. Tune shader renders faster. But it should be possible, but go ahead and try it out. But I think those were, would be the two problems that you would have with that technique. Just a little thought, one more thought. Uh, you talked about, uh, I guess, one point of the diffuse shader is that the internal. That is possible. As I said, just rebuild the scene in Blender internal. It shouldn't be a problem. You have the tune preferences there. Just try it out. and. Um, I actually do use the Blender render sometimes for masks and also for halos. Whoever says they should die can go home. I like them. <laughs> Welcome. Yes, of course. I'm if this is might be you might have to turn it on. Could you please um, keep it down for just a minute? Uh, I can hardly understand him. Okay, go ahead. You have a lot of modifiers. Um, let's just, I'm going to switch to Blender because in Blender we have the real time preview of Freestyle. So, one more reason. Oof. 
we found it again. Is there, is there, I think some of that stuff changes. It jumps around, especially with the particle settings. It might be me being haunted by something or it might be my impression, but I think stuff sh jumps around. Let's use a shadeless cube so we can see this better. And uh, if you go into the freestyle options, which are here, you have a lot of features. You have a lot of options, but they are very complex, I think, and they are quite well hidden. For example, if we go to the uh, freestyle line style, we can influence the stroke color, alpha, si thickness, geometry, and texture. I'm going to go to the thickness, add a modifier, a long stroke, and then I can uh, choose a minimum. Let's choose two and a maximum of five so we can see the difference. And it's now fading. Unfortunately, I don't know if uh, if I had just haven't found it yet, but I don't think you can influence the direction. Like I couldn't switch the direction, the fade direction of this line. I haven't found the option yet. It might be there, but I don't know. That looks nice. That looks bad. I like that. So yeah, that's. If you go to extreme values, two, two and ten are fairly extreme. Let's make it even more. Then a lot of the time you get this Picasso style. I like that a lot actually. And you have to click yourself through the modifiers. They're pretty cool. Like this is noise always good. And if you choose geometry, there the noise is even better. What I also like is blueprint. I don't know how this is blueprint. I call it, <laughs> I call it bubbles, but um, I still like it. So that also what I like is overshoot. Uh, is that here backbone stretcher? I think. Yeah. Now you can see it's going it's going over the edge here. That's nice too. <laughs> so once once you start this, you, it'll take you a while to stop it. Yes. You'll, you'll be hooked for a while. Especially with, uh, yeah, I like, as I said, I like the, the polygonization that even would enhance the effect. And what's that? Guiding lines are even more like scribble stuff. Perlin noise. Yeah. You can of course change the uh, order of the mod of the modifiers. Yeah, now we have the noisy stuff. Now that would look like my sister H3. More questions? Uh, Pardon me? The cheeks? Oh right, right, right. That's the original texture from Andy. That's the painted texture he uses in. Uh, here. I just plugged that in there and at some point I took it out. I forgot when. Here. Yep. I took it out. So uh, yeah. At some point I thought this would be too much detail for if I want to talk about the... would distract from this effect. So if you download it, the, all the textures are there. I just threw them out at some point. Mm -hmm. You can do both. You can do big pixel, you can do relative to render size, and I think you can even make it relative to the camera distance. Yes, please? That might work. That might actually work. No, I haven't tried that. But um, we can do it real quick, I hope. Cycles. And compositing, we would need this and this. Input. Geometry. Hmm? Mode Wrangler does not seem to be active.
think it's easier if you use the normal node, right? This is... I mean this way, right? Oh, okay. Uh, that might work. I actually used the normal pass in order to distort the hatching slightly. This is a very annoying player. I should have used VLC. If you look at the uh, rendering over here, I used... No, I don't think I used it here. I actually used the normal pass in order to try to wrap the hatching texture around the model to make it follow the topology. It didn't look that great, so I took it out again because some of the hatches got stretched. But I guess if you make it more subtle, it might work. So um, yeah, you could you could go ahead and try that. Actually, I'm going to post this talk on Blender Diplom. If you manage to do that, please uh, send me an email and I'll post your solution under it as well. That would be nice. Good idea. Anyone else? Then I guess I almost took up the hour. With the yeah, thanks for listening.